Hi, Mariners Church. Welcome. I'm so excited you're joining us today. If it's your first time at Mariners Online, we're so glad you're here. We'd love to learn a little more about you and how we can serve or pray for you. Please take a moment and fill out the Connect card that can be found in the chat window or at marinerschurch.org slash connect. Now, let's join in worship together.
you finish everything you start and my soul was made to respond
or as death for our liberty. So may I never boast in anything except the cross of Jesus Christ. And may
In 2003 is when they found out that the lump on my right hand was cancerous. Eventually, it began to spread uh, on my liver, my lung, my lung wall, and my kidneys began to fail me. And they told me that they wanted to take off my whole arm. I remember telling the doctor that I can't let you do it. I needed the Lord to give me direction on which way to go. Should I have my arm removed or should I not have my arm removed? I said, Lord, I need to hear from you. I'm in a mess right now. And in 2009 was the day that I walked downstairs and I got in the kitchen and the next thing I know, I was on the floor on my knees. And it was the power of God. He says two things to me that I will never forget for the rest of my life. The first thing he said to me, if you lose your arm, will you still love me? And I said, yes, Lord. I will still love you with tears in my eyes. And the second thing he says to me, if you lose your arm, will you still trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I will trust you to the day that you take me home. Well, I knew immediately it was time for me to have my arm removed. And when they removed my arm, the doctors told me, the cancer that we thought was there, we only moved a little small portion, but all the rest of it was gone. I've been cancer free now for almost 14 years. It really set me on a course to see God in a different light that even if I couldn't trace him, I would still trust him. I never lost my faith no matter what situation happened. I had no idea that I would be a shepherd to elder at Mariner Church here in Oceanside now, seeing in the elder prayer room every Sunday, people coming back, getting prayed for. I had no idea that God would use me in such a capacity now that he's using me in. To fulfill that purpose in your life, you have to start somewhere. I, t I did tell the Lord that I would praise him for the rest of the days of my life. With this one hour, I will lift it up and give you glory and give you honor and give you praise that only you deserve all by yourself. Amen. I'm so glad you're here with us today. My name is Gloria and I serve as a local engagement pastor. A moment ago, we heard Ron's story. When you give to God's work through Mariners, you participate in incredible stories like this. The generosity of our church made it possible for us to launch Mariners Oceanside a little more than a year ago. Since then, we've seen God use us to serve the city of Oceanside and the many military service members and their families living there with God's love. And he's continuing to open up new doors and bring us even more opportunities to take the good news of Jesus to people throughout all of Southern California and around the world. Text the number below to give now. Giving increases our joy and grows our faith. When we are generous with what God has given us, we grow in our trust in Him to provide for our needs and we are reminded that everything we have is a gift. Thank you for giving to God's kingdom work. We're so grateful for you and your partnership in the gospel. And now, let's join Eric as we continue our series exploring how we can make the most of our lives. You can access today's message notes using the Mariners app or through the link in the chat. Hey, welcome to Mariners Church. My name is Eric. I'm the senior pastor here. I'm really glad that you were joining us today. When my kids, Eden and Evie, were little and they were just learning how to walk, if they took two or three steps and then face planted, I would get down right before them and say, come on, you can do better. Give me six steps next time, come on. <laughs> no way, there's no way I did that. 
when they were just learning to walk and they took a couple of steps, even though they would face plant because they were looking at me and walking towards me, I rejoiced and celebrated. That's my daughter. That's my girl. And she's coming towards me. I rejoiced in their walking. When they were in elementary school, artwork that they created at school filled the walls in our closets. Some was framed and put on walls in our living room. I rejoiced in watching them do their work, use their gifts, and do something at school. When they're in junior high, I got to coach Eden's flag football team, Ebby's basketball team, and my heart leapt for joy inside as I watched them be aggressive. Evie dive for a loose ball on the court. Eden rush into the backfield and go for a flag. My heart just leapt. And then now, when they show me a school project that they have been working really diligently on, my throat sometimes has a lump in it. I am so proud. Parents, you know this feeling. You know this feeling. Have you thought, how does God, who is our heavenly father, look at me with what I contribute, with what I do? See, as earthly parents, we love to see our kids use their minds and their bodies and their will and go for what's in front of them to make the most of their gifts. But have you thought about how your heavenly father views you? The scripture says, how great the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. If you were his, if you have believed in Jesus, you have been adopted by God the Father. He is your heavenly Father. And when you stumble towards him, and even if you face plant, he does not kneel down and yell at you. He rejoices over you, he delights in you, and he loves to see you use the gifts that he has given you. We are in a teaching series called Life, Making the Most of It. And we're approaching the scripture with the understanding that God is the owner of all, and we get to steward what he gives us. So last week we talked about time. God is the owner of time and we wanna make the most of the time that he has given us. And this week we're gonna talk about our gifts and our abilities. God's the one who owns them. He's the one who owns all the gifts and all the abilities in the world. And yet he gives some to us to steward. You are gifted, you have abilities. And how do you make the most of your gifting in this life? Now, scholars make a distinction between your abilities and your gifts. And in the passage we're gonna read in a moment, the passage is gonna speak about your gifts. And the distinction between abilities and gifts that scholars make can be helpful, but we must understand that both are given from God, that our abilities are given from God and our gifts are given from God. Now, what's the difference between abilities and gifts? Well, the scholars who draw the distinction say, everyone has abilities. Abilities are given to you at your natural birth. And then Christians also have spiritual gifts given to you at your supernatural birth, at your rebirth, when you were born again, when you became a Christian and his son and his daughter, you were given spiritual gifts. So everybody, Christian and non-Christian has abilities. Christians have abilities and gifts. So when I, before I became a Christian, I did not have the ability to play professional basketball in the NBA. Did not have the ability before I became a Christian. I became a Christian and I do not have the ability to play professional basketball in the NBA. So becoming a Christian did not change my abilities. God gave me the abilities I have at birth and one of them is not to play in the National Basketball Association. But when I became a Christian, he also gave me gifts. And when you became a Christian, you received gifts as well. Now, if you are watching today and you haven't yet become a Christian, you're still checking out the scripture and who Jesus is, this is really an encouraging passage for you to understand why those of us are Christians, why we make such a big deal about serving other people. 
So let's talk about making the most of your gifts, but also your abilities. Look at the scripture with me. First Peter chapter four, verse 10 and 11. The scripture reads, this is the word of the Lord. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever, amen. There's two things I want you to see about you from this passage. And we're talking about you making the most of this one life you've been given. And that includes making the most of your gifting and your abilities. Number one, I want you to see that you are gifted from him. You are gifted. You have at least one, maybe more gifts, spiritual gifts given to you from God. I mean, notice what the scripture says, each one, that includes you, each one has received a gift. You, when you became a Christian, Holy Spirit of God moved into your life. You believed in God, the Son, Jesus, and then God, the Father sent God, the Spirit to live within you. And when the Spirit of God moved within your life, He gave you a spiritual gift. You have received a gift. Now the word for gift in the original language It is charisma, charisma. So congratulations, you've got charisma. If you're a Christian, you do. You have charisma, you have a gift. And that means, notice this next phrase, that you are to be good stewards of the varied grace of God. So you've received a gift. God's the owner of all gifts and all abilities. And now because you've received the gifts that you have from him, you are to steward the varied grace of God. Now this phrase is so amazing. You steward God's grace. So God is gracious, we know. God is gracious and good and loving and he has grace that he wants to give to people in the world. And he wants to give his grace through you. You are a steward of the grace of God. God has said to you, here is my grace. I'm asking you to manage my grace. And the way you manage his grace is by using the gifts that God has given you to distribute his grace to others. I mean, this is mind boggling to me. God is full of grace and he invites you. He's recruited you to give his grace to others. He asks you to manage his grace. I mean, think about this. When some of you have asked someone to manage your money, you've brought money into an investment portfolio and you've trusted somebody to manage your money big trust you've given someone to watch over your accounts, to make decisions on your behalf. You've entrusted your money for someone else to manage. Or some of you own property and you have asked someone to manage your property and you expect the person to be a good manager, to faithfully take care of the property that you own. Some of you are managers at a company and someone has asked you to manage a body of work or a a book of business or a portfolio or a group of people. Someone's asked you to manage people and resources. They've entrusted to you something really significant and you're the manager. Well, this, I mean, look, look at this verse. You steward the varied grace of God The grace of God is varied because God distributes his grace through a variety of gifts because God gives different gifts to different people. But the way he wants his world to receive his grace is through you. That's why he's given you a gift to faithfully administer, steward, manage his grace, distribute his grace to others. Now about the gift that you have, there are other verses in the scripture that give list of spiritual gifts. And they're not exhaustive lists, they're examples of the types of spiritual gifts that God gives people. And notice in the passage in 1 Peter, 
that Peter says, hey, if anyone speaks and if anyone serves. And many scholars have said, okay, every one of you, all Christians have a gift. And some of the gifts are speaking gifts and some of the gifts are serving gifts, but everybody has a gift. And so those who have made this list, they've looked at the other passages and they've taken the gifts listed in those passages. And they've said, okay, here's speaking gifts and here's serving gifts. And you have one or more of these gifts, the speaking gifts, teaching, exhortation, encouraging other people, prophecy, wisdom, leading. So the speaking gifts, and some have serving gifts, hospitality, mercy, helps, giving, administration. Now, I want you to look at these lists. These are all gifts that God has given and they are a way to distribute his grace to other people. So speaking gifts share the grace of God, share the love of God with others and serving gifts show the love of God to others. And in your profession and at school and at church, you use these gifts wherever it is that God has placed you. So at work, as you are merciful to others, you show them God's mercy as you help other people, you show them that God helps you. In the office, when you teach someone about the ways of God, you share God's grace with them. There's speaking gifts and serving gifts. Now, as you look at the list, we never should allow, oh, that's not my gift, I'm, I can't do that. Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm low on mercy. I took a test and I'm low on mercy, so I can be a jerk to others. No, no, no. No, or I don't have giving, so I don't give, or I don't, I don't, I have never speak, so I don't tell anyone about Jesus. We're really, as Christians, responsible for all of these things, but God has given gifts to his people, and so there's some of these that are just, you've been supernaturally really good at these things, because God has gifted you this way to distribute his grace to other people. Now, some have thought wrongly that the speaking gifts are more important than the serving gifts. I mean, I've heard, I, I hear this. People will come to me and they'll say things like, Eric, man, it must be awesome to be able to impact so many people, to speak to so many people, as if what I do is more important than what other people do, but it's not true. Because God has given gifts to his people and every single gift is really important. In fact, Sometimes the speaking gifts, like what I'm doing right now, they may make a broader impact, but it's really the serving gifts that make a deeper impact. When I look at my life and the life of my dad, my gifts often line up in the speaking gift line and my father's gifts line up in the serving gifts line, but he's made such a profound and deep impact. On a weekend, I'm teaching and speaking from a platform like this, Do you know what my dad does in the weekend? For multiple decades, he has served in the preschool ministry at his church. I have a microphone and my dad has building blocks on the floor with preschoolers. And when I don't speak, somebody else speaks and everybody's fine. When my dad doesn't show up in the preschool ministry because he's out visiting us in Southern California, those families, they are not happy because their kids love my dad so much. He's made a deep impact on those families. My dad also, because he has the gift of helps, of serving. Many many people don't know this, but my dad serves and has served as a handyman for widows and those in need in his church. Whenever there's a call that's given out for someone to go help, my dad signs up to help and he's made a deep impact. A Couple of weeks ago, I got this text message from someone after I shared that my dad was diagnosed with ALS and it's just incredible. Notice what this person said. This is about my dad. In 2015, our son died of a heroin overdose and your dad answered a plea to help us finish laying hardwood in our home that our son and husband had barely started. He didn't know us and didn't have any reason to be here other than to come alongside two very broken parents whose house was in shambles. We are deeply grateful for his generous gift of time. I cannot tell you how many times we've mentioned him by name as we've opened our pantry and seen the meticulous job he did 
on the floor inside. You will open a pantry this week, and as you do, you probably won't remember my sermon. Do you remember what I preached on last week? Do you remember what I preached on two weeks ago? I didn't even preach two weeks ago, but whatever. No, you don't remember. Because sometimes the speaking gifts, they make a broad impact. But that family, when they open their pantry in their kitchen and they see the floor that my dad laid, they remember the mercy of Jesus because my dad was merciful because he's received the mercy of Jesus. And so don't ever say that your gift is not significant. Your gift is deeply significant. Each one has received a gift and you, you get to use your gift in his world to serve other people. You get to steward the grace of Jesus in your speaking, in your serving. You have a gift. You are gifted from him. That's the first point. Now, I want us to read the passage together again, and I want to give you the second point. Read this with me together aloud. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Number one, you are gifted from him. And number two, you are gifted for them. You are gifted from him and you are gifted for them. You are gifted to, notice the passage, serve others. The reason God has given you a gift is, it's real simple, it's for others. It's for them. God has given you a gift. Make the most of it. Make the most of this one life, this one life with the gifting you've received. Make the most of it by serving others. The reason you are gifted from him is for them. It's to serve others. Now, God will use the gifting he has given you in your career. God will use your gifting and you will be able to make money and provide for yourself and provide for your family. But the reason he gave you the gift isn't primarily for you to provide for yourself and others. The primary reason he's given you the gift that he's given you is so you can serve others. As you use the gift God has given you, you will be thrilled and fulfilled. I mean, it is exciting for you to use the gifts that God has given you. But the primary reason that he's given you the gifts is not for you to be fulfilled. The primary reason that you've been gifted by God isn't for you to be thrilled. It's thrilling, it's awesome to be used by God to use your gifts, but that's not the primary reason. The primary reason is for you to serve others. And your heavenly father, who's given you the gifts that he's given you, he rejoices and he delights as you serve others. And notice this next section in this passage. You don't have to serve others in your own strength, you get to serve others with the strength that God provides. Notice the phrase, you speak as you speak God's words and you serve with the strength that he provides. You don't have to, those of us who speak, we don't have to live with the pressure of coming up with some of our own words. As a preacher of God's word, I don't have to live with the pressure of coming up with something profound. I just get to teach what God has already made profound. You, as you serve, as I serve, I don't have to put pressure on myself to serve in my own strength and energy. No, I get to simply speak God's words and serve in the strength that he provides. And this, this right here, is why you serving is what really will cause you to grow and mature in your spiritual growth. Because When you find yourselves serving, oftentimes you will find yourself in seasons or in moments or in places where you are overwhelmed and you know, I can't do this. I need his strength. I need his words. Have you ever been there? 
Have you ever been in a place where you're at the end of yourself and you know, I can't pull this off. God's asked me to do this, but I can't make it happen. I need his strength. You know that when you were there, you were most dependent on him and that's when he grows you. Have you ever been in a place where you're in a conversation, you've stepped into it because God's led you into it, but you know you don't have the words. You need him to give you the words. Those are the moments that are so sweet, aren't they? The moments when you trust in him, that he's gonna give you the words to say, the strength, the energy that you need, that's when we grow. When we serve others, we find ourselves in a position where we need his words and his strength. See, if you aren't serving others, oftentimes you're never in a position where you really need his strength. You just are living in your own strength. And if you're living in your own strength, you're wasting your life because you aren't enjoying his strength, you aren't enjoying his words, and so serve others so that you need his strength and you need his words. See, needing his strength puts you in a position where you will really grow. I remember when Kay and I first moved to Miami. I'm 27 year old, years old at the time, a pastor in Miami, and we moved into this neighborhood that was was filled with young married couples just like us, but pretty much all of them were Hispanic. And we all moved into the neighborhood at the same time because it was a new turnkey neighborhood. So everybody was outside hanging out and the Hispanic culture is awesome in that way. I mean, we are just having cookout almost night after night with our new neighbors. And Kay, my wife, she's got serving gifts, specifically hospitality. And so we're inviting everybody over to our house and we're getting to know these people and I'm a pastor. And so, you know, early on, someone will say, man, so man, what do you do? And, you know, hey, I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm actually a pastor at this church. And almost all of these guys, they grew up in Latin America in the Catholic faith and the Catholic tradition. And they had never met a pastor who's married. I mean, they had some encounters when they were younger before confirmation where they met a priest, but the priest was not married. And so they, they're, they're like, whoa, 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 you're, you're, Hey man, I've never met a priest who, who's married, they would say. And I'd say, man, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not a priest, I'm a pastor, but it's similar. Um, but yeah, I'm married. And they, they would be dumbfounded. They, they would say like, so it's cool, like you, can, like you can have sex and stuff? And I'd be like, I, I would shock them. I would say, oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, my wife and I, we're celibate. They'd be like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no man, I'm joking. Yes, my wife and I, we, we, we actually have sex. And, and so their, their mind was blown. They're talking to a pastor who's married. And so it was great. We're getting to know these guys. And my wife, Kay, says after a couple of weeks, Eric, maybe we should invite all of them over for a Bible study. And so I'm, I, at this point, I'm 27. And I mean, she's done the serving gifts. She's kind of looking at me. You're the speaking gift guy, Eric. Why don't you get them all together? And so I remember being so nervous. I've been inviting these guys who I've just met to our home for a Bible study. And I'm in over my head. And see, when you're in over your head, you need his strength, you need his words. I remember driving to and from the office for a couple of weeks, praying for opportunities where I could, it would feel natural where I could invite each of the guys over to our house for a Bible study. Some happened outside, a couple I knocked on the door and invited them and they all said yes. They all said yes. And so we started this Bible study in our home. I remember the first night being so nervous. Now, many of them had told me they didn't have a Bible. And so I went and got all of us the same Bible and they showed up and I passed out all of the Bibles that I bought. And I remember we were in the Gospel of John. That's where I was starting. And I said, hey, let's, let's look at John. And several looked at me and I realized real quickly, they had never opened the Bible before. And so instead of saying the Gospel of John, I said, hey, let's turn to page 812. And so I'm calling out page numbers. And we started reading the scripture together. And because these guys were, were so new, they had questions every week, questions that I did not have the answer for. I mean, now I'm, I'm much older and I've studied the Bible much longer, but I was 27 back then. I didn't have all the answers, but here's what their questions did for me. Their questions put me in a place of being overwhelmed where I need the strength that God provides and the word he provides. And it caused me to dig more into the scripture. It caused me to be overwhelmed and need his strength. 
Are you ever overwhelmed with serving that you need his strength? See, those are really good moments because you have the words that he provides and the strength that he provides. And this is how he grows you. This is how the heavenly father looks at his sons and daughters as we, I mean, I was stumbling all over the place. I was face planting all over the place, but my heavenly father was looking at me and was proud of the steps that I'm taking. And he wants you to take steps towards him, to use the gifts that you've given to serve others. You are gifted from him for them. You are gifted from him for them. Now, this passage that we read, it is so beautiful. Peter was one of Jesus' disciples, and he's the one who wrote this passage. And he wrote at a time in history that was crazy. Nero was the Roman emperor and Nero was was persecuting, killing Christians. It was a really difficult time to be a Christian. The world was crazy and chaotic. There was all kind of fighting and tension. And here's what Peter says. Guys, I know the world's crazy right now, but you know what we're gonna do? You know what we're gonna do as God's people? This is it, each one of you. Use your gift to serve others. You're gifted from him for them. All of the craziness in the world, let's take our eyes off of that and let's put our eyes on serving each other. Let's serve one another because God has gifted us to serve one another. And Rome, who watched these Christians who start off this really small group of people at this time in history, they were blown away by the Christians. In fact, we have writings of Roman leaders who were inspecting the Christians and learning about the Christians. And they would say things like this, they care for one another like we've never seen before. See, in the Roman culture, people would backstab each other and try to kill one another to get power, but not these Christians. No, these Christians, they served one another and they served people in the world. They served people in the culture. When people were sick, the Christians stepped in with mercy and with helps. When people needed wisdom, the Christians stepped in with the wisdom of God. They served one another and the world was turned upside down. Not because the Christians freaked out at the chaos surrounding them, but because they simply obeyed the instruction, you've been gifted from him, serve them with the gift that God has given you. And you have been gifted from him for them. And God will use your gifts in your career. He will use your gifts in your family. He'll use your gifts in the culture. He'll use your gifts in the school you attend. And he wants to use your gifts in the church. He wants you to use your gifts in the church. And I'm gonna speak to you as I speak to my own family about this. So as a family, as we talk about our spiritual growth, every week, this is what we talk about. We worship together. We pick a service that we're gonna attend and worship God together. And we talk about where we're gonna serve in his church. See, we don't just wanna take from and consume from the church that we're a part of, Mariners, but we wanna serve the church. And I, as a dad, love seeing my kids serve, which is just a small picture of how our Heavenly Father loves to see us serve. My oldest daughter, Eden, she volunteers in our special needs ministry. Our youngest daughter, Evie, she volunteers in worship in our junior high ministry. Kay, my wife, finds ways to serve within our church and teaching women and encouraging women. I, um, I do this, but not only this, I sometimes, well, really for the last four years, I found a place to serve partly because I love teenagers. So I led a high school life group for four years, but partly for my own good. I wanted to find a place for my first four to five years here where I was serving outside of my job description. I was serving in a place that the elders who I'm accountable to never asked me about. I was serving in a place that was outside of my role. Why would I do that? Because I need it. I need to be reminded that I'm a regular Christian. Not only am I a pastor, but I'm a Christian. 
I'm a follower of Jesus. And because I'm a follower of Jesus, he has gifted me. I am gifted from him for them. And you too are gifted from him for them. You have been gifted by your heavenly father and he wants to see you make the most of the gifting he has given you. Now, some of you who are watching right now, you attend one of our physical congregations in Southern California. It's still summertime and you're not back yet from summer travel. And if you are not serving somewhere, when you get back to the congregation you attend, I encourage you to find a place to serve in your church. But if you're a part of Mariners Online, we have ways that you can serve the online community. And I wanna invite you to do so. Let me, let me show with you the ways that you can serve. You can be a weekend host. This is where you welcome people in the chat, you talk with people, you pray with people. We're looking for people to be a part of our weekend host team. We also are looking for people in the online community to be a part of our connect team. This is where you, make phone calls and you email with people who visit our online community and you let them know different opportunities that they have to get connected. We're also looking for people from our prayer team where you can pray for people every single week. People on Mariners, from Mariners Online share really deep and profound prayer requests with us. And we want these people prayed over and shepherded well. So we're looking for weekend hosts. We're looking for people to join our connect team with Mariners Online and also people to be a part of our prayer team. And we also have Mariners hosted here. And with Mariners hosted here, you get to host Mariners worship services at your home or your condo or your apartment. And we would love to help you do that. And if you wanna volunteer, this is all you need to do. You just text volunteer to the number on the screen. And we would love to help you use your gift to serve others. Your heavenly father has gifted you and he is not kneeling down as you walk and stumble. He's not yelling at you. He's encouraging you. He's reminding you to make the most of this brief life that you have. And one of the ways you make the most of it is to each one, this means you too, to use your gifts to serve others because you are a grace manager. You manage the grace of God as you serve other people with the gift that he has given you. You are gifted from him for them. Let's go, let's serve others.
I'm so glad that you're with us today. Will you extend your hands? I'll pray a prayer of blessing over you. Father, I pray for your sons and daughters as they begin a new week. Remind them, I ask, that they are your sons and daughters who belong to you forever. Fill them with your peace and your wisdom and your mercy. Bless them this new week. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.